But 24 Sussex, the PM's official residence, is in terrible shape. It needs millions of dollars of repairs. 24 Sussex Drive is the official residence of Canada's Prime Minister. It is also a run-down, drafty burn. 11 Prime Ministers refuse to maintain the place. It is the home of the most significant person of our executive, but unfortunately what it represents now is demolition by neglect. And deemed unsuitable to remain the official residence of Canada's Prime Minister with its asbestos, rickety windows and bad wiring. Welcome to yet another episode of Canucks Unlimited. Today, we're looking at 24 Sussex, the official residence of the Prime Minister of Canada. How did the property get to this point? Where do we as a nation go from here when it comes to the accommodation of the Prime Minister? What other options are there? Before we get to those questions, have you ever wondered how 24 Sussex Drive along the banks of the Ottawa River became the official residence of the Prime Minister? It starts in 1866. Ottawa as we know it today is just beginning to take shape. Prior to becoming the capital of the Dominion of Canada, it was capital of the province of Canada, which consisted of what is now Ontario and Quebec. That said, Ottawa only hosted the final sitting of the province's parliament in 1866. Ottawa was still a wild lumber town, which brought the man responsible for creating 24 Sussex to Ottawa. Joseph Merrill Currier was born in Troy, Vermont in 1820. When he was 17, he joined the lumber trade in the Ottawa Valley. While not formally educated by the standards of the time, Courier nevertheless climbed the ladders of various industries and quickly. In his lifetime, he controlled many lumber mills, railways, printers, including what would become the Ottawa Citizen newspaper, tanneries, insurance companies, and banks. He was, at one time, a Ottawa City Councillor and a provincial and later a federal member of Parliament. In 1866, Courier set out to build his home on Ottawa Street, later to be named Sussex Street and now Sussex Drive. It was built for his third wife, Hannah Wright, who was a member of a prominent Hall Quebec family. His architect brother James assisted with the design, taking inspiration from the Gothic construction of the new Parliament buildings. The home hosted Prince Arthur, the Duke of Connaught, in 1870, who would later become Governor General. For the event, Courier built an adjacent ballroom, which was later torn down during renovations. When Hannah passed away in 1901, the house was passed to their son James, who in turn sold it to William Cameron Edwards for $30,000. Edward was another lumber baron turned MP and was appointed to the Senate in 1903. He made many changes to the property inside and out and lived there until 1921 when he passed away. The house was then passed down to his nephew, Gordon Cameron Edwards, another lumber baron from the Ottawa area. In 1943, the National Capital Commission expropriated 24 Sussex Drive, the property is directly across the street to the main entrance of Rideau Hall, home of the Governor General of Canada, who is the federal vice-regal representative of the Canadian monarch, or, in other words, the head of state. The NCC wanted to control how 24 Sussex was used in the future, as it had with other residences along Sussex Drive. Before we look into the history of 24 Sussex as the official residence of the Canadian Prime Minister, you must wonder, where did Canadian Prime Ministers live before the government acquired 24 Sussex? The answer is pretty much the same as with every other ordinary Canadian. They lived in private homes or rented apartments in the city of Ottawa. Let's go on a tour. Sir John A. Macdonald lived in several residences in Ottawa, while his official home was in Kingston. From 1867 to 1870, he lived in a house at 63 Daly Street, which burnt down in 1872. He then moved to a residence at 95 Chapel Street. This house was later demolished. Our second Prime Minister, Alexander Mackenzie, a proud frugal Scottish stonemason who refused to be knighted three times, lived in a rented apartment at 229 Wellington Street, later demolished to make way for the Confederation Building. Sir John A. returns to power in 1878 and lives at Staticona Hall, a mansion at 395 Laurier Avenue East, then called Theodore Street. It is now the High Commission of the Government of Brunei. In 1883, Macdonald bought Earnscliffe, a Victorian mansion overlooking the Ottawa River. He passed away here in 1891. Since 1930, Earnscliffe has been the home of the British High Commissioner. We don't know where Sir John Abbott lived while he briefly served as caretaker prime minister. He was one of only two prime ministers to take the office while serving in the Senate. Our first Catholic prime minister, Sir John Thompson, lived in a now demolished house at 227 Metcalf Street. He served for just two years. He died at age 49 at Windsor Castle in England, the day Queen Victoria added him as a member of her Privy Council. 
There are no records to show where Sir Mackenzie Bell or his successor, Sir Charles Tupper, lived while Prime Minister. Sir Wilfrid Laurier lived at what is now known as Laurier House at 335 Laurier Avenue East. He lived there from 1897 until his death in 1919. In 1956, it was declared a National Historic Site. Sir Robert Borden lived in a house at 201 Wartenberg Street, which has since been demolished. Arthur Meehan, during his first reign as Prime Minister from 1920 to 1921, lived in a house at 21 Cooper Street, now the site of an apartment building. William Lyon Mackenzie King lived at the Roxborough Apartment Buildings, located at the corner of Elgin and Laurier, now Confederation Park. In 1921, with the passing of Madame Laurier, William Lyon Mackenzie King inherited the house which would later become known as Laurier House. He lived there until his passing in 1950. Between Mackenzie King's three separate terms as Prime Minister, Mahon returned briefly, and R.B. Bennett served a full term as Prime Minister during the height of the Great Depression. Rather ironically, the wealthy lawyer lived in a multi-room suite at the Chateau Laurier Hotel during his tenure. Louis Saint Laurent, who succeeded Mackenzie King upon the latter's retirement from politics, lived, as did his predecessor, at the Roxborough Apartments from 1948 to 1951. Saint Laurent reluctantly became the first Prime Minister to take up residence at 24 Sussex. But before we get into his time there and that of other Prime Ministers, let's look at how 24 Sussex became the official residence of the Prime Minister of Canada. As mentioned, the National Capital Commission expropriated the property in 1943, but the idea of using 24 Sussex as the Prime Minister's residence first comes to light in a story in the Globe and Mail on August 24, 1907, when the Laurier government denied they were looking into such an arrangement. Senator Edwards, the lumber baron who owned 24 Sussex at the time, may have floated the idea to raise funds for his business. One month before the story broke, a fire ravaged through the Ottawa neighborhood of New Edinburgh, destroying one of his lumber mills to the tune of $300,000. With his insurance policy only covering $50,000 of the damages, perhaps the idea of selling 24 Sussex to the government as an official residence to the Prime Minister was an idea to cover the costs. As the expropriations moved forward, Senator Edwards' nephew, Gordon Edwards, took the NCC to court. He was opposed to the valuation of the property by the city, initially appraised at $90,500. He eventually won a higher amount, plus court costs, but not the full quarter million he wanted. And of course, the newspapers complained. In the meantime, various government sources both confirmed and denied that it planned to convert the property into an official residence for the Prime Minister. Mackenzie King continued to offer his opinion on what should be on offer for future Prime Ministers, which the opposition, somewhat incredibly, agreed with. At one point, sources claimed that 24 Sussex would not be the site of the official residence, but that story didn't have legs. 24 Sussex, it seemed, was meant to be. It was announced that renovations would begin on the house, which didn't really cause a stir until after when the costs came to light, thus starting a tradition that continues to this day. In 1951, Louis Saint Laurent became the first Prime Minister to take up residence at 24 Sussex Drive. He insisted on paying rent, a tradition that continued until 1971. Every Prime Minister since Saint Laurent has lived at 24 Sussex, with two exceptions. Kim Campbell lived at the PM Summer Residence at Harrington Lake in Quebec. This was a favor to her old boss, Brian Mulrooney, whose property in Montreal was not ready to move into. Harrington Lake, by the way, was owned by Gordon Edwards' brother. Justin Trudeau, who came to office in 2015, decided to reside at Rideau Cottage on the grounds of Rideau Hall. Can you blame him? Asbestos, mold, leaking roof, rotten tube wiring, animal infestations, ghosts of your parents' divorce. Let's face it, any one of those things would be bad enough. Ask yourself, would you want to live there? 24 Sussex, from Saint Laurent's time to today, has joined concepts like reopening the Constitution, modifying national health care, or having an opinion about Céline Dion or Justin Bieber as the third rail of Canadian politics. In other words, if you spend money to fix 24 Sussex or improve it, you're a selfish jerk, and come next election, the voters are going to send you out to the curb like yesterday's trash. So, just like Jack Granistine's two books, which asks the question, who killed Canadian history and who killed the Canadian military, the finger points at us when it comes to 24 Sussex, the Canadian voting public. We destroyed 24 Sussex. But alas, I digress. In 2022, the fun folks at the National Capital Commission, who indirectly caused the mess we're in today, offered up their opinion on the subject. They claim it'll take $36 million to renovate, 
or $40 million to replace the building at 24 Sussex. But hey, this is Ottawa we're talking, so let's just double that amount to be safe. In a nutshell, the NCC wants to create a space that no longer serves as a residence, but as a mini White House where the Prime Minister can hold state functions. But we already have that place across the road. It's called Rideau Hall, and it's the home of our de facto head of state, the Governor General. In fact, it's where Prime Minister Trudeau chose to live, at Rideau Cottage. So why duplicate this? If we just want a simple residence, we already have the Prime Minister's retreat at Harrington Lake, which isn't as far from Ottawa as some people's commute to the suburbs. And if the Prime Minister requires a multifunction building that allows him to be in the same building as his office and advisors, a la 10 Downing Street or the White House, we have the Prime Minister's office on Wellington Street across from Parliament. Surely it could be renovated to include a residence. What are your thoughts? Should Canada renovate 24 Sussex or tear it down and replace it? Should future Prime Ministers live on the grounds of Rideau Hall at Rideau Cottage or even Harrington Lake? Or should we just add a residence to the office of the Prime Minister? Tell me below in the comments. Thanks for watching. Remember to click like, subscribe, and ring the bell to know when new content has been added. Till next time, thanks for watching.